I got fired. Employers lawyers should have done their homework. I did. Posted by Zakana. This happened to me about 20 years ago while in college. I'm being deliberately vague because reasons. The background. I got a job basically office sitting on weekends. I showed up at 8 a.m. and every hour I checked over things, handled the occasional phone call, and then left when the 4 p.m. person arrived. Most of the time I read, watched TV, or played games on my laptop. I probably worked no more than 10 minutes of every hour unless something went wrong. It went on like this for years. The pay was decent, holidays were double pay, and I even had opportunities to cover weekday shifts when others were sick. One day, while I was covering the midday shift, my boss asked me to come into his office. He told me that the evening weekday position was going to become available that night. He offered me the position, which I accepted. I was told to punch out and return at 5pm that night. The reason it went down like this should be obvious. Things went okay for a while. I showed up at 4 p.m., did the normal things, and then left at 12 a.m. when my relief arrived. It was a little more work, more call volumes, and so on. And then, after nine months, things started to go south. The daytime person developed a huge attitude problem and went from a nice person to a total Karen. She would complain about everything I did. For example, one time a system jammed up at a remote site and she called them. Five hours later, I saw the jam was still there, so I called that site again to see if they were still working on it, or if something else was wrong, because the woman on our end, who would have been the one to help them, was leaving soon. They did have a problem, and so I hooked them up. My reward for making sure the problem got solved and not having to bother an upper level employee at home on a Friday just after having left work? I got yelled at because Karen complained that I had, apparently, ignored her log entry about the issue. My defense was ignored. The boss had me highlight important things on the log to verify that I had read them. Things plodded on for a while with this new normal. I tiptoed around Karen when needed, thankful for the fact that I only had to deal with her for no more than five minutes. I did the stupid highlighting thing and my log entry started getting more and more detailed, even referencing Karen's calls when I had to follow up on an issue that crossed shifts. The firing. The following summer, just after I crossed the year mark, I went on vacation to visit some friends out of state. When I got back, after about a week, my boss came down after everyone had left and had me describe how I did a certain task which involved certain updates. I explained to him how I did it and so forth. He then told me that I had not been doing it at all and that he was firing me. I had transposed the date code of the English file for the French file which was the previous one. The newest one had already been applied anyways, so nothing was wrong. It was just a reason to get rid of me. So I left the office. My state is an at-will employment state, which means that I can quit at any time for any reason and my employer can terminate me at any time for any reason. The only exceptions were state and federal laws such as race, religion, and so on. I thought I was screwed, so I just started applying everywhere I could. During my job search, I happened to accidentally stumble upon a link about employment law. Out of curiosity, I read it and discovered that my employer had shot themselves in the foot. In the employee handbook, there was a job security clause. What this stated was that they would never lay us off in such if our jobs were eliminated. We would simply be retrained and sent to fill an opening elsewhere in the company. It sounds good, but resulted in them cooking up reasons to fire people to get around it. But their fancy high-priced lawyers had missed something. In my state's laws, the ones passed by the legislature, I was screwed because of at will. What they neglected was case law, the ones determined by courts. This site cited a case from the state's Supreme Court that had ruled that a job security clause waived at will on the employer side, turning it into a just cause relationship. This means that they had to have a real reason to fire me. The revenge. With that in hand, I sought out a lawyer. After my consultation with her, I set about collecting my evidence. My former boss did not realize that I knew more about this program than he did, seeing as I ran the same software on my own computer and laptop. I experimented. The date of the file, which they tried to use against me, is baked into the version. 
I was able to demonstrate to my lawyer that if I applied the same update over and over, which my former employer stated would change the date every day, would, in reality, display the date of the file. I showed this by backdating my own copy by a year using the update archive available from the vendor. Next, I showed her how the task used to be automated. A script would snag the file and process it every day on its own. A change on the vendor's site broke the script. It was an easy fix, but no one bothered to do it because the guy who wrote it retired. The fix involved deleting three characters on one line in the script. The task was also marked as only being a weekday task. In my firing, I was told how important this update was and so forth. If it was so important, why was it not done on weekends or holidays? The vendor pushed out updates on those days too, as I showed my lawyer the one from Christmas morning. And why had the automation not been fixed? With all that in hand, she contacted them. After presenting them with the law, they broke and all the evidence I had collected, they were forced to settle with me. So, in the end, their fancy high-priced lawyers did not do their homework. I did. Thank you to the wonderful librarians I have known in my life who taught me my information literacy skills. They paid dividends in this case. Update. I never found out how the reaction went down as the main corporate office that would have dealt with it was in another state, and I never had any contact with those people. I imagine a new handbook was issued before they cut my check though, so I feel bad for those who remained. Karen's fate was sealed about a year later. I saw a Facebook post by a former co-worker mentioning that his job with them had ended, so I asked for details. The company experienced a huge loss in revenue. As a result, Karen lost her job as the site I'd worked in was closed. Of about the 50 of us that worked in that office, only 10 or so were moved to another location. Thankfully, most of the ones that I liked were old enough to retire. It did not take a genius to realize that my termination was simply a layoff disguised as a firing. This just goes to show that when it comes to pro revenge, if you do your homework, that will help you not be taken advantage of in cases just like this. So OP, well done. Read your darn emails, Karen. Posted by They Call Me Jaws. I used to work in an office. What kind of work isn't particularly important to the story, so just picture a basic office job. Every January, HR would send an email to all employees with the employee handbook. This included job descriptions, office policies, and so on. Every year since the PDF handbook had been established, it would be named with the year following it to establish it was different than the original and all the other years. Any changes would have updated next to the section in the table of contents so you could see what had changed from the previous year and familiarize yourself with anything new. Now with that background, we will introduce Karen. Karen had been with the company a pretty long time, about 10 years I believe. She was fine at her job, just fine. She would get things done, but not without making everyone else miserable in the process. She would ask questions that had already been answered and basically just waste everyone's time for fun. She was just plain nasty to people and tried as hard as she could to make everyone else stay far away from her. The worst thing about her was she always seemed to be looking for a fight or looking for a reason to complain. She had threatened lawsuits a few times over any small thing, but would always just get over it and drop it because she knew no laws had been broken and it would never go anywhere. She'd comment on how she should sue basically every business she ever went to because she could live off the settlement and retire early. Over the smallest issues that you can imagine. She did her job and we never had a valid reason to fire her, especially knowing how lawsuit happy she was, so she stayed. Karen's job description, as per the handbook, called for a bachelor's degree. Karen did not have a bachelor's degree, but had been hired prior to that being a requirement, so she was grandfathered in. One day, a position above hers became open. A guy who we will call Terry had recently completed his master's degree after taking night classes for a few years, and since an internal promotion is typically better than an outside hire, he was chosen for the promotion. Terry had been at the company about four and a half years and was well liked and great at his job. The new job required a master's degree in his job description, and him being a recent grad, it was a perfect fit, and everyone was happy for him. Everyone. <laughs> but Karen. Since she was constantly looking for something to sue about, she took it as a direct insult that she had not been considered for this promotion that she was not at all qualified for. 
She immediately cried discrimination and told our boss her lawyer would be in touch. We were all perplexed since it was very clear that this position required a master's degree and given that she didn't even have a bachelor's degree, there's no way she could have been hired for the role. Ooh, what we soon realized was that Karen had saved the original company handbook named Company Handbook and had not bothered to open or save any new additions that were sent in the following eight years. She just assumed no changes had been made and that it was just sent every year to ensure that all employees had it. If she's bothered to open the file, she would have seen the sections that say updated in the table of contents. Since Karen cried lawsuit a lot, no one expected much of this since it was a ridiculous claim. But sure enough, Karen gives her resignation letter via email and it is scathing about how she can't bear to work in such a discriminatory environment that would only promote men. When any of the higher ups try to speak to her about this and clear up the confusion, she basically tells them to F off and to read the dank email. I don't know any more of an explanation. She basically goes full Karen. Not long after, a letter comes in from her lawyer asking for a settlement to avoid a discrimination case. What Karen hadn't realized was that our boss's sister-in-law owned a law firm. She didn't really take on clients herself anymore and mostly just managed the other lawyers of her firm. She was basically semi-retired. What this meant was that she had plenty of time to review any letters from Karen's lawyer and advise us. Since Karen didn't bother to read any of the updated handbooks, she was unaware that this position had required a master's degree for many years now. I mean, I believe about six years. She supplied her lawyer with the original company handbook from nine years ago, and he used that as a reference in his settlement demand. This was when we realized that she hadn't read any new handbooks in years. Since Karen rubbed a lot of people the wrong way, Boss's sister-in-law decided to personally take on the case. Every letter Karen's lawyer sent, she sent back one three times in length. Some of it wouldn't even really say anything, just wordiness, but it would certainly take Karen's lawyer a while to read it. And he did not come cheap. After several of these letters, they realize no settlement is going to happen, and they want to take it to court. It's a pretty cut and dry case. Boss's sister-in-law shows evidence that Karen has received all the updates via email. After the change was made and the handbook was sent out, HR even sent an email to Karen specifically, letting her know that she was grandfathered in and doesn't need to worry. To which Karen replied, okay, thank you. Confirming receipt of it. The best part was when Boss's sister-in-law said that they couldn't break company rules to give Karen a job she was totally unqualified for while neglecting another employee who went above and beyond to get his master's degree to advance, as that would be unfair to all other employees. Karen now had a huge, seriously huge bill from her lawyer for all of these letters and filing the case and so on. No job, no one she could list as a positive recommendation, and no degree. In the time she had been at the company, it had become industry standard to require a bachelor's degree, so she was effectively shut out of her career. It would also be hard to explain how you work somewhere for a decade and don't have a letter of recommendation from anyone there. Ah, if only she had read her darn emails. <laughs> this one is good because the Karen is so confident that she's gonna come out on top. And then she's like, I have everything backed up. And then it turns around, uh, no, you've just been ignoring everything over the past eight years, Karen. She's so confident and gets shut down. As always, way to go, OP. Taking down Queen Karen, president of the HOA, posted by California Old Timer. Okay, this happened years ago, 1985 to be exact. I was 45 when this happened and 81 now. So after my second retirement, I started doing property management. I bought this 2,500 square foot luxury home with the sole intention of renting it out. Now, I didn't know how bad the HOA was, but when I became the owner, I soon found out. This all took place in two years time. Karen would literally have a problem with everyone in the neighborhood. Trash cans left out? Fine. Loud music after 10 p.m.? Fine. Yard sale without permission? Fine. Removing dead plants and replanting without approval? You get fined. It went on and on like this. Now, the community could run for the HOA board, but the HOA board chose the president. 
Six out of the ten members on the board liked Karen, so she always kept her job. Her husband was in the medical field, so she made a lot of money. It got to a point, too, where she was called Queen Karen in the neighborhood and her dishing out those HOA fines. Now, I used to go in person to collect the rent because the people that rented my house were good friends of mine. I did this for months. So, I would park my car by the front of the garage. I and my friends were having some music on, but it wasn't that loud. Queen Karen came over driving her golf cart and said, Excuse me? Yeah? You have to turn that music down. It's too loud. I told her that it was 8 p.m. and that the music that's even loud can be played until 10. She wasn't having it and demanded that I do so. Now, my friends and I kept the music going and we were enjoying ourselves. She proceeded to get angry and find me. Now, most people will just take the abuse and pay the fine, <laughs> but not me. I went to the HOA board, contested the fine, and won. From that point on, Queen Karen made it her personal mission to destroy me. She would whine and fuss about every little thing. I fought what I could, but I did end up paying for some of it. She also went after my tenants, which made things worse for me. I had to sit down with my friends one night to discuss the problem. When I parked my car, Queen Karen came over in her robe and said I have to park somewhere else. I did because I didn't want to start anything. We see her go back into her house and embrace a man that isn't her husband. We were being noisy and we came to the conclusion that she was cheating on her husband. Uh, spoiler alert, she was. My friends and I told Queen Karen's husband. I'm sure he did some investigation because three months later, they divorced and he was moving his stuff out. Now, gossip said that Queen Karen got nothing because she was the one that cheated and she didn't have a job, so she wasn't entitled to the money. From this point on, Queen Karen had a massive decline in the quality of life that she had. She sold her car and got a cheaper one, and she adopted different dressing habits. But even after the divorce, she never got a job and she was still living somewhat better than everyone else. Fast forward to 1986, in February. Queen Karen and the HOA had been giving out fines for very obscure things and increased monthly dues. Having trash cans out a couple hours early or after the trash man left would result in a fine targeting people that had older or dirty cars and goes on and on. Me and the other people in the community, we were sick of the crap that she and the HOA were pulling. So at the next meeting, we made our voices our concerns. Queen Karen said that the community had been falling behind on repairs and that the dues and the increase in fines were necessary, especially if people weren't maintaining their own property. She said that it was in the yearly budget report and that we should have read it. The other peed off residents and I go and we read the statement. Now, none of us read it because we take it as a junk mail and disregard it, but we read the whole statement, cover to cover. Queen had increased the HOA budget 15% and where that extra money was going remained unknown. We went over to her house the next day and demanded to know where the extra money was being spent, but she refused several times. She closed the door and went back to watching TV. We're filing a joint lawsuit to find out where the money was going. And in June, we found out. Cue the revenge. Queen Karen was living off HOA fines and dues. The increase is because she was running out of money. She still didn't have a job, so she embezzled from the HOA so she wouldn't have to get a job. She gets busted. We call the police for her embezzling the money. She was charged with fraud and extortion. The neighbors and I filed a joint lawsuit against Karen to get reimbursement as well. Because she had no money, she had to mortgage her house to pay us all. She later went to federal prison for six years with no parole. Because she went away, no one was paying on her house. The bank foreclosed on it and it was bought by someone else. So when she got out in 1992, she was homeless. Honestly. The majority of us didn't want to ruin her life like this. Had she toned down the excessive fines, we would have let her be. But she had to double down and steal from us because she didn't want to get a job like everyone else. Holy crap, OP. You know, when I was getting into this story and reading it, I'm like, he's getting good revenge on Karen. Queen, Queen Karen, actually. And then it just gets worse and worse and it's heavier and heavier. And I'm like, wow, you go, man. And hey, if you would ever happen to watch this story, you're awesome, dude. The secret phrase of this video is, I read my email. Thanks for watching and be sure to check another video here. I'm Austin, see you there.
Queen Karen was living off each. <laughs> I'm sorry. 